Um, I'm here to host and uh, I'm absolutely delighted. So thrilled to be able to say we have one of our favorites. Welcome, my friend. Um, wonderful to see you and hey, you have the floor. All Thank yours. you. Thank you. It's good to be with you guys. I'm going to talk about engaging wisdom and higher consciousness, infused knowledge. You are more than human. You can go beyond your intelligence, your IQ, your education, because you are now connected to the mind of God and you are connected to the limitless realm. The truth is, if anyone's in Christ, they're a new creature. You're a brand new creature. That's kind of weird even to say it, but you're a creature. You're not even a normal human. That's why I wrote the book Beyond Human, because Paul said, I can't look at anyone in a human way. So church history is full of incredible stuff that we've forgotten. The saints have already done incredible things. They've accessed remote site, knowledge. They, they, you know, I'll tell you here's one thing that in church history was very common. In church history, the saints would often know when they were going to die or what when another person was going to die. It was never a surprise for them. They would have knowledge about their lives. Some of the Celtic saints and Catholic saints, they would prophesy over babies and tell their entire life. They would say how old they would be when they would die, how many children they would have. We've already functioned in so much more. And what I feel is God wants to wake us up again, arise and shine, because he wants us to be the shining ones who move in a realm of knowledge and understanding, even about subjects you don't know anything about. So you might be on this call and think, I don't know anything about technology. I don't know anything about finances. I don't know anything about, you know, heavenly realms. I want you to know today that you can access those dimensions. And at the end of this session, we're going to do an access in practice. And I'm going to show you that it really is easy to go into the realm of light. I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, I am a testimony of somebody who's learned to engage heaven. I sit inside union with Yeshua and I engage the spirit of wisdom. So I'll give you an example of this. I was traveling to South Africa and they arranged for me to go to the next country, Namibia. I never heard of Namibia. It was a beautiful place, mostly desert with so many gemstones that people find them just on the top of the sand. Incredible place. Anyway, I was with these business people and for years they've been trying to build these houses for the poor in a certain area of the town. And they'd lost money on this project and it'd been blocked and blocked. And they asked me in the car, they said, why can't we get a breakthrough on this project? So I just stopped. I breathed, came back into union and rest because I can't answer that question, but God can. And then I went up into wisdom. I ascended into wisdom and sat inside wisdom breathing in, resting. And immediately I got the download and I said to them, the reason you're not getting success is you're building the wrong types of houses in that area. That area should be wealthy, prestigious houses. And if you build wealthy, prestigious houses, you'll get favor with the rich and that will funnel money for the poor and you'll be able to do multiple projects for the poor. These two guys went, wow. They said, how have we not thought of this? And we've been working on this for years. And they had lost over a million pounds or whatever on this. See, one minute of ascension was worth millions of pounds. And the thing is, guys, is if any of you are in Christ and you're one with him, you can fix your mind on things above and enter into the realm of wisdom. See, we have this. But the problem with a lot of the church is they're asking for God to come. They're asking for God to do this. They're asking for God to do that. And God's saying, come up here. Come up now. Yeah, come up into the realm. Elizabeth saying, come up now. That's it. Is that we have, the Bible says, free access to all God is. 
So we don't have to live in the limitations of the knowledge that we've got right now or the finances that we've got right now or, or our understanding of space and time that we've got right now. We can enter into this massive, massive realm. Now, I've seen the future and in the future we are so glorious. It says in John, but now we are sons of God, but what we will be, we don't know. Now, when we see him, we'll be like him. Now, I've seen that future, and I can tell you now, God himself told me this. I'll quote what he said. He said, the human spirit has a limitless capacity to grow. No matter where you're at right now or how old you are, no matter what your experience is, you are limitless. You are going to continue to grow. You are going to know about the cosmos. You are going to know about the stars. You're going to know about the courts. You're going to know about the angels. You're going to function with saints. You're going to function and create space and time. You're going to govern matter itself because all creations wait in for the revealing of the sons of God. You have a massive destiny. Now, my question is, is how much of that can we live now? That's the big question. How much of it can we live now? Woo! Just getting a, a wave of Holy Spirit there because God really wants us to know that we are loved and having given us Jesus, will he not also with him give us every good thing? So there are realms of knowledge, realms of wisdom. Now, I'll show you one book. I love reading books about the saints. This is just one book, Marvels, Miracles, Mysteries. Joan Carol Cruz. This is about Catholic saints. Now, one thing I'll tell you is that in history, we've already moved in this, whether it's the Celtic saints, Desert Fathers, or Catholic saints, we as a Christian, as a new creation race, we have already moved in this. The problem is the modern church has shut it down and said only prophets can do this. Only apostles can do that. Only teachers can do this. When really we're, we're in the all in all and we're one new man. We've been jacked up, hooked up. Yes, we'll have different functions, but you have free access to the thoughts of God, the mind of God, the intentions of God, the joy of God. You are seated in heavenly places. Now, notice it says you are seated in places, which means you're a multi-dimensional being. You can access the courts. You can access Eden. You can access the angelic canopy. You can access the mind of God. You can access the past, present and future. You have access in union with God to all of these realms. So it's all by faith. By faith, Enoch was taken. By faith, we journey deeper into union. By faith, they moved mountains. By faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is being anchored in confidence of your oneness with your, the Lord, that you're in him and he's in you, that you're one. Faith is anchored in goodness. Faith is anchored in that you are loved. <laughs> OK, I'm trying not to get too whacked. So here's a good quote from a from a theologian, Baxter Kruger, about God. God is essentially and eternally very happy. A great dance of shared life that is full and rich and passionate, creative, good and beautiful. So God, God is uh, Richard Rower. Father Richard Rower calls God absolute friendship. So I want you to think about this. If you've got an, a brilliant friend, an amazing friend, that friend wants to include you in everything they're doing. They'll include you in their thoughts. They'll include you in their plans. They might even take you on vacation with them. They might give you gifts. They'll do anything for you. They'll cut your lawn. Well, one of the definitions of God from the saints is that God is absolute friendship. So I want you to think about that, that God is absolute friendship and he wants to include you in the conversation. Someone put God is homely. Yeah, I've spoken on this before. That's the term Julian of Norwich used. Homely means a friend. God is defined as the, the lover. I think it was Ignatius that said God is the lover of the human race. Wow. So. 
when you think of it like that, that God is homely, God is community in the Trinity, you're included in the conversation. You are included in the conversation about time and space. So in one of my recent encounters, I was taken with Jesus and the spirit of wisdom and I saw the mind of God. And there were these people sitting around the thoughts of Yahweh, observing his thoughts, seated in a realm where it says, you know, the thoughts, I think, towards you plans to prosper you and not to harm you. See, we're not in the age anymore where the Lord just wants you to have a little prophetic word. Little prophetic words are just the cookie trail to bring you into union. When you come into union, it says many will ascend into the, the realm of God and be taught by the Lord. So the true pattern is that we, the prophetic gets us interested and then the Lord catches us. So think of it as fishing. The prophetic is bait. <laughs> and then the Jesus grabs you and pulls you to himself into the Trinity. And now you have access to being taught by the Lord. Isaiah 2, 2, where it says in the last days, many will say, come, let us go up. And he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. And out of that realm will come the truth. So how are we going to transform the earth? We're going to transform the earth through the mystical. Now, the mystical is a very biblical word. It's um, 26 times in the New Testament. It's mysterion. Some translations like the Amplified and others use the word mystical. For example, the Amplified says in Colossians 2 that Christ is the mystic secret of God. So what is becoming mystical? Mystical means that you begin to access mysteries. Here's the Oxford Dictionary quote for it. A mystic is someone who believes in the spiritual apprehension of truths that are beyond our intellect. Wow. How many of you on this call right now want to know truths beyond your human intellect? How many of you on this call right now wants to see things that no eye has seen, hear things no one's heard, know things, know distant events, know what your friends are doing, know what your timeline is, know what the angels are around you, know which saints partner with you, know where you're seated in the courts, know what's going on in the stars, in the galaxies, what are the beings exist in creation? How many of you want to understand finances and how to grow in wealth so it becomes a river where wealth produces wealth? How many of you want to stand the technology and rhythm of creation, songs, music, poetry, understanding of genetic history? How many of you want to stand the past, like what, were, what was going on in the past of the earth? What happened with the watchers and the Nephilim and, and, and the Egyptians and the Babylonians? How many of you guys want to stand the future? What's coming over the next century? What does 500 years look like? All of this is available to explorers. See, all of the things that Jesus gave us is incredible, but you won't know it unless somebody tells you we can engage it because we are mystics. Um, one translation says we are the mystical body of Christ. Marriage is mystical. Speaking in tongues is mystical. We are given to know the mystery, mystic secrets. So Colossians 3.11 says from now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. Christ is all and in all. So every one of you on this call, you haven't got a portion of Jesus. No, you don't get a double portion. You get the full lamb. You get the full Jesus. You get the full Christ living in you, the all in all. Every single one of us is joined as one body to the same mind, it's called the mind of Christ. We are all fully loaded up with Jesus. That's why I'm not very Pentecostal where I hear, do you want a double portion? I don't want a double portion because that would take away what I've already have. You and I have already been given the fullness, it says in Ephesians. We have the full portion. The Passover, they had to eat, eat the full lamb. They didn't eat a little bit of the lamb. They ate the full juicy lamb. Wow. The creamy buttery lamb. They had the full portion and you have the full portion. The truth is, says he was joined to the Lord, Paul said, is one spirit with him. So even your spirit is now one with his spirit. Even now your spirit is joined with his spirit. You can't even say that you have an 
a separate spirit from Holy Spirit anymore. Paul said it. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit you're born of the spirit you're born from above you are now born of the trinity jesus is the firstborn of many brethren he's the firstborn of many sons so you are the children of oneness you are the tribe of one you are the you are the body of yeshua you are the, the you are the trinitarian flow you are the children of light the children of yahweh born and seeded by the divine of one being of as he is or as john said as he is so are you in this world we are one new creation we're a new creature we're a new creation we're not even from this world so paul put it like this don't be conformed to the pattern of this age or this world so we are now from another age another world another creation born from above born from the womb of the morning, the tribe of one, born from yod heh vav which is Yahweh, we are born from another creation. So although we're in this world, we're not of this world. So we don't have to act like human. We don't have to sound human. We don't have to act human because we're now the merger between the Trinity and humanity. So Paul put it like this, if anyone's in Christ, they're a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. They are in a brand new world. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So we're in a brand new world. Not only a new, new, but the world you live in is also new. You are now not in the same world. You are born from above. You function from above. You're seated above. You're hidden above. And you have free access to the fullness, the fatness. Wow. Of the unlimited mind of God. Ah, wow, wow, wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Woo. Woo. So if any of you have heard my podcast, you will know that I had a dream many years ago, and I called this dream Mystic Housewife. I love this dream. And many women around the world have come up to me and said, that's me. I'll tell you the dream. I saw in a dream a housewife being personally mentored by heaven. As she cleaned, she was being taught the secrets of the kingdom. This continued in secret for years until she was commissioned to teach. One day she stepped out and began to speak. There was no stop in her. She was a new oracle. Now in this dream, it was an amazing dream. I watched this woman. She was doing stuff in the house, but she was engaged in the heavens. Her heart was in the heavens and she was being taught by the Lord. And at the end of the dream, she went up to her pastor and said, I'd like to share this Sunday. And they said, we love you. We trust you. Please go ahead. And she stood out the front and she said, I want to start to teach you the mysteries, the secrets of the kingdom. And she began to speak. Now, the Lord show me this is happening all over the earth. We are in a generation now, right now, right now, where we are moving past the prophetic movement into the age of oracles, into the age where he will pour out his spirit on all flesh as a frequency of visions and dreams and activations of the mysteries of the kingdom. And the kingdom is how to bring joy. The kingdom is how to transform economies, education, schools, the cosmos, the stars, how to judge, how to create, how to co-reveal God's goodness, that we will tremble at his goodness in the last days, that we are in an age where there is a massive downpour constantly of wisdom like rain. And all we have to do is have an open heart. See, the rabbis teach this. They say that it's been poured out. If you can have a closed heart, if you think of yourself as a vessel or an open heart, an open heart will be constantly flooded in this generation with revelation and understanding. I can stand next to a person and it can open up. I can see a realm around people and I can go into it and I can take people into it. And you can, too, because we're from that realm. We're from that realm. We're born from above. 
Okay, so these mystic housewives are, are going to be across the world and other people, children. I'll pour out my spirit and there will be dreams, visions and downloads. Now, Einstein understood this. Einstein said this, the most beautiful and profound emotion we can experience is the sensation of the mystical. It is the sower of all true science. Isn't that amazing? So Einstein said that all true science came from being sowed by the mystical. The mystical or the realm, the realm of oneness, the realm of union, the realm of love, the realm what some call Christ consciousness or higher consciousness or be repented, teshuva in Hebraic, being in the mind of God, the, the wow, the cloud, the cloud of God's presence is a realm where all science comes from. Let me just show you this. So looking at big breakthroughs in the last century and the periodic table where we know different metals, Dmitri Mendeleev, he dreamed, he said this, it formed in my head, but I can't express it. I saw in a dream a table where all the elements fell into place. As required awakening, I immediately wrote it down on a piece of paper. So when your children go to school or when you go to science and you see the periodic table with all the elements, copper and iron, that came from union, from a realm of union with the thoughts of God. That came in a dream. It was a puzzle he couldn't solve and he saw it come down. So even in schools, they, there are things all the time that are taught from heaven. See, heaven is about love. Heaven is about fresh water, electricity, new technologies, goodness and kindness like this. We're using the Internet right now. I'm going to show you now this has come from heaven. Right. So the atom. We all know about the atomic structure now with the nucleus of protons. But people didn't know. People didn't know. Now, Niels Bohr, who was the guy who discovered this, he said, in a dream, I saw the nucleus of the atom with electrons spinning round it, like planets going round the sun. He had a gut feeling that it was accurate, so dedicated his research to proving the theory. Wow. He won the Nobel Prize for physics for his breakthrough. So get this. God gave us the blueprint for atoms. So Niels Bohr is trying to understand the atomic structure and God goes, here it is. So that's how it works, guys, is you have to have an open heart, a searching heart, a heart that's looking, a heart that's open, a believing heart. And then the Lord sees it from heaven and gives it. He lands it on you because he sees somebody that honors it. When you honor it, you will see it. When we honor angels, we see angels. When we honor the courts, we'll see the courts. If you honor the cosmos, he'll start teaching you on the cosmos. If you honor music, arts, poetry, you'll start to function. And you can go beyond human limitation in this. Another one, DNA. We all know that DNA is two spirals, but nobody can see DNA, DNA is so small. So how do we know it? It came from a dream. Jane Watson, James Watson, rather, saw a spiral staircase in a dream in 1953. No one had developed the idea of a double helix for our DNA. He went on to win the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1962. So even the DNA helix that you see everywhere came from the mystical. It came from the spirit. It came from God wanting humanity to grow. See, the Trinity are constantly pouring out love and life and saying, do you want it? Do you want to see? Do you want to hear? Do you want to understand? Woo! <laughs> We're going to engage this in a minute, guys. This is good stuff, isn't it? Um, okay. Another one, Google. You know how big Google is as a company? Google only exists because of the mystical. Um, now, I'm not saying the way they do things is right, but basically Larry Page, he dreamed he could download the entire web onto some old computers lying around. So he got up in the middle of the night to do some maths. When he realized it was plausible, he took two years of studying to create what became Google. So Google, 
Google, the Google search engine method came from infused knowledge because God wants to connect people. God wanted the internet. God wants this technology so I could speak to you now. Years ago, he told me he was going to accelerate technology because it's a manifestation of his goodness. It's good that we have hot water. It's good that we have clothes. It's good that we can see each other. It's good that we can travel and even go to the stars. So he's going to pour out knowledge and wisdom and understanding. This will be the the age of light, the age of Daniel, the age of Solomon, where wisdom's been poured out like rain. You know, I love Rick Joyner. And Rick Joyner said, we cannot understand this age without understanding there'll be a significant increase in revelation. We are in the age of outpouring of light, arise and shine, illumination of light and wisdom and understanding, repairing. And this is what I was shown in heaven. I was taken into heaven. I was shown Isaiah's book is open. And um, they they gave me a wine. And this wine was oaky wine. And it was this verse. They shall be oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will repair the desolation of generations. They will rebuild the ruined cities. They will repair the desolation of the ages. And what I was shown when I had this wine and I came out of the trance, I heard voices speaking and they spoke these words. They said, architects, landscapers, designers, artists, we are moving into the age of fulfilling Isaiah's book where we will rebuild and understand the past. We will heal genetics and we will rebuild cities. There'll be new ways of doing energy. There will be new ways of engaging gravity. There'll be new ways of engaging the stars and space and time and connecting and community and arts and creativity. Even our physical bodies are going to begin to change as this realm opens up. We will we will begin to experience the new creation transforming our organs and crazy, incredible things are going to happen like expanded lifespans, expanded lifespans. I, I've been shown many, many things about the future and I love it. OK, so God can give you a revelation on any of these things. So even as you're listening on the call what is it that you want to experience? What is it that you want to know? What, what questions do you want to throw out into the, into the realm, into the cloud and saying, Yahweh, I want to administrate this into creation? I mean, for me, I've loved angels and I've pursued angels because other people didn't. But I thought God loves angels. So I'm learning more and more about angels. Um, I'm learning about the cosmos, time and space. How do we govern time? And I have time miracles because the Lord started teaching me that we can bend time, shape time, redeem time, reverse time. We can heal the desolation of generations. And we've done genetic miracles on people where we've healed trauma in their genetics. And then they've been healed. The most recent one we did in the last year, which was incredible, was a woman with a terminal illness and a group of us ascended. And we spent two hours engaging her DNA and she shook for days and then was miraculously, totally miraculously healed. Two doctors became a Christian because of this miracle. So God wants us to understand that we are so powerful. We are so powerful. You know, Paul put it like this, that we need revelation to understand the hope to which he called us and is incomparably great power for us who believe. So inside of us, yeah, someone's putting mental health, healing and addiction. Come on, there are strategies for this generation. There are blueprints for this generation on all of these things. When I was in the heavens with Enoch, I saw the father releasing his dreams as, as destiny books, scrolls, glowing books uh, were coming out of him into the earth. And I saw people all over the earth grabbing them and administrating them into creation, administrating his dreams as the Ecclesia. Now, that is the purpose of the Ecclesia. The Ecclesia is not a Sunday service. The word Ecclesia means legislative assembly. It is from the word ek, which means called out, and kaleo, which means to have a name and a function. So we are the called out to have a name and a function. They were the legislative assembly of Athens. That's the word Jesus used, Ecclesia. He didn't use the word Sanhedrin because Sanhedrin was religious. Sanhedrin was, was, was a box. He used the word 
legislative assembly from Athens, the Ecclesia, and they were in charge of governing politicians, businesses, culture. Everyone in the in the community of Athens was underneath the Ecclesia. So the Ecclesia are the government of God to transform not just earth, but the stars, the solar system, dimensions, realms, galaxies, timelines. We're the government of God to bring life, light and immortality into creation. We're the government of love. We're, the, we're the, those who walk in a realm of love. We bring love and life. Wow. Woo. Woohoo. Woohoo! Wow. Wow. I feel very charged on this because I know this is one of God. This is on God's heart. He wants earth to get better. He wants earth to be healed to the increase of his government and peace. There will be no end. Jesus says it's like the mountain that will take over. It's like the sea that will become the tree that all birds nest in. What's inside of us. I love what Bill Johnson says. Bill Johnson says there's no reverse to the kingdom of heaven. It's constantly expanding. The fact we have this this conversation on Zoom right now is because God is releasing strategies to connect. The fact that we have all these clothes and energy and health care and, and, and nutrients and food and lifespans are expanding. Um, literacy is expanding. Well-being is expanding. People are getting fresh water. More and more people are getting toilets. More and more people are getting human rights. Schools have been built every every day. New technologies have been developed every day. We're starting to look to the stars for solutions. And even in the asteroid belt, there are minerals and gold and diamonds and everything we need is in the asteroid belt, just floating around like space junk. So we, my friend and I even wrote to the Welsh government to propose building a spaceport in Wales. And my friend did the financials for it. Because we are dreaming of a new earth. We are dreaming of a new creation. We are dreaming of a world where there is limitless energy for everyone. And people are just as wealthy in Africa as they are in America. Why? Because God's dreaming of this. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son to transform it and to create heaven on earth. Now, we've been praying for 2000 years for heaven on earth. And I've got good news for you guys. It's coming down. Yes, things are shaking, but it's because heaven is displacing. Wow. Displacing. <laughs> so God wants to share wisdom with us. And now in the Ethiopic book of Enoch, which is the one quoted in Jude, is the one quoted by Jesus, is the one used in the time of Jesus, it's in the Dead Sea Scrolls and is quoted by the, the early church. Enoch saw our day. He said that he saw our generation in the far future. And one of the prophetic words he gave for us was this. Wisdom shall be poured out like water and the glory of God shall never fail. For he is mighty in all things and in all secrets of righteousness. So we're in the age that Enoch saw. Enoch said at the start of his book, the things I've seen are for a generation far in the future, a distant generation on the end age. That's us. We're on the end of the age of death, end of darkness, end of war, end of separation, end of poverty, end of lack, into the age of limitlessness, life, immortality that Isaiah saw. Isaiah saw this coming. So it's raining wisdom right now, and it's all about saying, wisdom, I honor you. And that's what I did from a young age. I said, wisdom, I love you. I read in Ecclesiastes and Proverbs and the Book of Wisdom that if you love wisdom, she would come to you. If you honor wisdom, she would cherish you. She would give you life and wealth. And she's done that for me. And all the things Rachel and I have done have touched over the years have prospered and the people we help prosper. Why? Because I, we love wisdom and we've chosen to partner with wisdom. We've chosen to love and cherish wisdom. Wisdom is the most beautiful being. She's one of the spirits God's created in the, in the first works of creation. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, Father. Woo. It says this, that, that, that she is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are all who retain her. 
in all the quests we've got right now. Yes, let's go deeper in love, deeper in union, but ask Jesus to share wisdom with you. So she prepares a table. She prepares wine. She wants to teach us. She stands in the paths and says, learn from me. I will show you. Wisdom's come to me so many times and give me solution. The word wisdom is the word Sophia in Greek. And the word Sophia, the root meaning is clarity. She's the spirit of clarity. So how many of you guys on this call today want clarity? You want clarity over your relationships, your finances, your marriage, your ministry, your business. Then the, the solution is build a relationship with wisdom. From today, say every day, wisdom, I want to be clothed in you. Wisdom, I love you. Wisdom, I need you. Wisdom, I want to walk with you. Because God wants people who are seeking wisdom like Solomon. That's all Solomon wanted. He said to the Lord, give me wisdom to know how to govern. Oh, wow. He wanted wisdom. Listen to the verse. One Kings four says God gave Solomon. Ah, wow. Sorry, I'm loving this. My heart's swelling with joy because I just feel wisdom's love for you and wisdom's love for me. OK, God gave Solomon wisdom, the deepest of understanding and the largest of hearts. There was nothing beyond him, nothing he couldn't handle. How about that, guys? How would you like to function in a realm where there's nothing you can't handle? You're the steadiest person. You're the clearest person. You're the most stable person. You're operating in wisdom like Wes and, and Liz. I know with Wes and Liz, you know, who are hosting this call, no matter what they're going through, they are the most stable people. <laughs> They're the most joyful people. I've seen them go through trial after trial and nothing phases them because I can tell you now they are shining ones. Shining ones are those who are illuminated with the wisdom of love and life and understanding. Wow. So I have a massive vision and the Lord does for this to be planet joy. The earth will be the glorious star, bright, shining planet in creation that it will it'll trigger hope into the cosmos. I believe the earth is meant to be restored and renewed as the gate of heaven. It says in, in it was the gate of heaven. It was made from the fountain of the deep, which is the abyss of God, the thoughts of God. So the earth, this is what Jews teach, is the earth wasn't spoken. It says the spirit brooded over the face of the deep. The deep is where the spirit searches the deep of God. It's called the abyss of God or the thoughts of God. And the earth was pulled from there without form and void. And the spirit formed it with wisdom. And together they started to create. Now it talks about this in Proverbs. And this is wisdom speaking. It says, when he fixed the foundations of earth, then I was beside him as an artisan, an artist. I was his delight day by day, playing before him all the while. One translation says dancing, playing over the whole of the earth having my delight with human beings. So that's the NASB, Proverbs 8. So earth was formed by play, by dance, by art, by energy, by symphony, and we are made of the earth. Our bodies are made from the earth. We're made from the realm of dance. We are made from the realm of play. We are made from the realm of wisdom. We are made from the frequency of the vibration of the Holy Spirit. And we are pulled out of the mysteries of God. So even your body is a mystery. Even your body is mystical. This is why your body's included it. And your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, because your body is made out of the raw matter of God's thoughts. And your spirit is made from the breath of life, which is the Trinity. So this is what makes humans unusual. This is why Lucifer came here. This is why the watchers came here. This is why there's such a warfare on earth all the time, because it's the gate of heaven. It's made from the abyss of God's heart. And we are we are the children of light from a kingdom of light born to create and co-create the future and transform the stars. It says even principalities and powers in heavenly realms, the cosmos, the celestial, are waiting for the revealing of the sons of light to transform it and break off death and decay. 
So we are a celestial species born from Zion, born from above, born from the Trinity. And this planet, for God so loved the world, is the gate of heaven. So this planet, even this planet is going to be restored as a multidimensional gateway. It says that you'll see Jerusalem on earth. You'll see the Lord on earth. Even earth is in, enfolded in the hope of the of the next stage that there's a kainos earth and a kainos heaven a new heaven and a new earth and we are the catalyst for this it says all creations waiting for the revealing of us so we are the company who are who contain encoded within us the blueprint of the future we are the people that contain within us the blueprints of the ages we are not just the blueprint but the ability to create the future, to create worlds, to create new outcomes, to bring life back to the solar system, life back to the seas, life back to art, culture. We are powerful beyond our wildest dreams. That's why Paul said, we need the spirit of wisdom and revelation to show you the hope that he called you to. His glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. So you need God to crack open your remembrance of who you are. It says in Psalm 22, verse 27, all the nations will turn and remember. So encoded within us is the memory of the deep, is the memory of the breath of Yahweh, is the memory of the Trinitarian dance. Inside of us is the new creation. The kingdom of heaven is within you. So he's calling a couple of a company of people who begin to move from the realm of wisdom, the realm of wisdom. She has special delight in humanity. It says in Proverbs, it says I was a, one translation of Proverbs eight says this. I was especially pleased with humanity. God loves humanity. But wisdom also loves humanity. Wisdom is a celestial cosmic being made at the beginning that was an artist and a play partner with the Trinity. And she is especially delighted in humanity because we are Adam. Now, Adam in Hebrew is Aleph, which is God. The Lord our God is one. It signifies yod heh vav -Hey. And Dam, which means blood, we are God's blood. In other words, we are the visible frequency of the Trinity in creation. We are the body of Yeshua HaMashiach, and we've been called to establish the government of light and love in everything we touch. And it's time for the Ecclesia to rise up. Now, there have been times in history where we did this. In the past, the Desert Fathers and the Celtic Saints did this. The Celtic Saints transformed Britain. They moved in such a realm of knowledge. They would pray and light would come out of their, their, their huts. And they, Columbus, St. Columbus said this, I saw all of eternity in a sunbeam. They would get downloads on art and poetry. They united Britain. They united the Picts, the Scots, the Welsh, the Irish, the Anglo-Saxons through the kingdom of God. They moved in such a realm of glory that they, they brought education to Pictland and educated Scotland. They brought arts and culture. They wrote the Book of Kells, which is this beautiful artwork. They built Celtic crosses that have lasted for thousands of years. They changed the landscape of Britain. Most towns are, are named after to houses of prayer in Britain. Britain was full of prayer houses just up the road from here in Merthyr. There was 30 monastics alone in the next village. This whole nation was shaped. I'm named after St. Justinian. This whole nation was shaped by a company. They walked with angels. Angels would come to them and tell them who tonight as the kings of Ireland. They would tell them who tonight. They led the king of Britain to the Lord. They, they led King Oswald to the Lord. They moved in such a realm that they could pick up musical instruments. They would go into the realm of the spirit and they would know how to play them. There's examples of this over and over again. Bridget, where we get the word bride from, she was the first woman apostle. She had to go and help with a dispute at a chieftain's house. And while she was waiting for the chieftain, the father-in-law was there with all these musical instruments. So they all sat down and they just began to play for fun. And God gave them all a download on how to play musical instruments. And they all played and the joy broke out and they won the court case because the chief was so happy seeing his father-in-law playing instruments. Now, this is still happening today. Guys like Joshua Mills, he learned to play the piano in one night. 
he got drunk in a revival meeting, a Rodney Howard Brown meeting. And the next morning, his, his parents took him to bed drunk in the spirit. The next morning, he woke up and he could play the piano and write songs. It's the same with Akiana, the famous artist. When she was four, she got taken up into heaven and physically vanished. She came back as a, as a prodigy, as someone who could who can draw incredible art. She's been on Oprah Winfrey. This has happened over and over again. In Azusa Street, the realm opened so much that when it fell in Bonnie Bray Street, the woman playing the piano could speak fluently 11 human languages. Many missionaries in Bonnie Bray Street and Azusa Street would go all around the world speaking the languages. It happened to John G. Lake. He wanted to speak Italian. He saw some Italians at the train station. He asked for the realm to open and he was able to speak to them in Italian. I've had times where I've understood other languages. I've understood German and, and Italian when I've been in the spirit. So this realm is meant for us. And it, John G. Lake gave this incredible prophecy that he said a day was coming where the saints of God, the new created ones, would be able to speak every human language from the spirit. These things are coming. One of my favorites is Roland Buck. I don't know if you know him in the 1960s. He was a pastor who was taken up to heaven. He heard a voice speak. He was preparing his message on Saturday night, 10 o'clock, around 10 o'clock. And a voice said, come up into the, the throne of God where the secrets of the universe are kept. And he was taken up. And in five minutes, he spent seven months in heaven. He had, he, he had 2,000 scriptures put into him. He could understand maths. He could understand science. He could understand things that science hadn't seen yet. He could understand world events. He knew 120 world events in detail. And he, he, he started walking with angels. I believe he's a blueprint of now. Imagine people all over the world going up. It says in the last days, many will say, let's go up. Imagine you have a download. I have a download. They have a download. Everyone shows up. And we've all been in the realm. And we're all beginning to engage. And we're all beginning to speak. That's what's happening. Church is not going to be the same anymore. We are going to be the sons of light in a kingdom of light who will rise and shine. So I'm going to land it now. We're going to do a quick meditation because we're running out of time. We're going to go up. This is a verse for it, Colossians. It says, pursue with diligence the consequence of your co-inclusion with Christ. Relocate yourself mentally. Fill your thoughts with throne room realities. Wow. So we're a company that we're going to fill our thoughts with throne room realities we're going to know things that we've never known see things we've never seen because it's the time of great change it's the time of the restoration of all things spoken of by the prophets okay there's a lot more i could say about this subject i've only scratched the surface but i hope you've enjoyed this i hope it's resonated we're going to do a simple activation now for the last 10 minutes of this session I'm going to teach you how to go into the realm of light. And it's very, very simple. Jesus said, if you become like a child, you can see. You can practice this every day. You can go every day. You already have it. You're already there. It's about the way you think. So it starts with putting your feet on the floor and becoming aware of your body softening your face we're going to go into the meditative state where we access these mysteries we're meant to meditate every day every night so we relax our face sit upright but soft so you're relaxed become aware of your body and your feet on the floor and we're bringing ourselves right now back to our body we're coming back so repentance in hebrew tashuva means return to yourself so right now, to access these things, you have to let go of thinking of other things. Forget everything else just for five minutes. If you have a thought about anything else, let it go like clouds in the sky. We are going to focus on our union with the Trinity and we're going to go up into the realm of light. The way you do that is by letting everything else go and just breathing. Start by breathing. Remember the breath that you have is from Yahweh. He breathed into them. So just maybe take three deep breaths and just focus on it. Sense it. Breathing in. 
Breathe out and let go. You can already feel it changing, so breathe in. And breathe out and let go. You're letting go. Breathing in Yahweh's love. You can use the breath anytime you want to center on God. It's called the prayer of silence. It's called the prayer of recollection. Now, I like to say things like this. I keep breathing. And I say things like, I'm in you, Lord. Breathe in. You're in me. We are one. Now try that. Breathing in. I'm in you. Sense it. You're in me. We are one. Now what I want you to do is very gently sense your oneness with God. Don't think of God as being separate from you. You are, he is the ocean and you're a wave. You are one. I'm in you, Father, you're in me. We are one. I'm in you, Jesus. You're in me. We are one. You might want to rock slightly and engage it. I'm in you. You're in me. We are one. I love you. Oh, you love me. We are one. So that's part one. Be still and know. So part two is coming into the knowledge. So part one is you engage union and you breathe in and you say things like I'm in you or I love you. And you make yourself aware of your oneness. Now, what I want you to do is very gently Imagine above you is just bright light. You know what light looks like. That's the light of God, where we walk in the light. Now, very gently ascend up into it. See yourself just moving up effortlessly, joyfully. You're going home. You're going from to where you're from. Now enter fully into the light. Sense the light, feel the light. Imagine your whole body is immersed in light and you are breathing in his love for you. Breathing in love. Now open up your heart fully to this realm. Lord, we open up our heart to wisdom. We honor wisdom. We love wisdom. Yahweh, we want to know the thoughts that you think. Wow. You might feel God's presence quite strongly. That's normal. Maybe you might sense angels or saints because you're in the realm that they're in now. You're in the heavenly realm. It might feel very gentle at first, but if you practice, it will get stronger. It's okay. You're learning. If your thoughts wander, just very gently breathe, bring them back to love and engage the presence. Now see yourself soaking in all this love and light right now. I thank you, Yahweh, that you are filling me with knowledge. You are filling me with truth. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Yahweh. Now, even if there's something distracting happening, like I just had police sirens going past the building, is you turn away from that and just very gently turn back to love. And you just stay in the love. Now, even if you do it for 10 minutes a day, you will notice a change and you'll find that there's a gravity on it where you will very naturally start moving into it. Even at night, you'll find that you are home. You are home in the light. Arise and shine. And very naturally, you will enter into rest. And that rest is your seat of government. You govern from the seat of rest. So if ever you've got a problem, get out of the energy of the problem or the people. Don't live in chaos. Enter back into union, use your breath 
and then sit in wisdom and sit in rest. Breathe in and speak from that realm. And then your voice will carry the frequency of another world and creation will respond. That's what it means to pray in the spirit. Praying in the spirit is being in the name. So it's not saying in the name of Jesus, it's being in the name, which is a realm. You are in him. You are in the name. You are in yod heh vav You are in Yahweh. And you sit there in rest. And then the government of peace comes through you to bring order to chaos. And everywhere you go, you become a life-giving spirit. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you for today. And then gratitude keeps it open. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you that I'm growing. Every day I am growing. Every day I am growing to be more and more in love with you. Amen. Now, very gently come back to your body. Because if you're in a strong state, you need to come back because you don't want to drive a car straight away. Or So I sometimes rub my face, wiggle your toes, rub your hands, have a drink, and then you come back out. And you're ready for action. You're ready to do whatever the Lord wants you to do, even if that's just having fun with the kids or gardening or shopping. You are living from another world and it's beautiful. It's very, very beautiful. There you go. Thank you guys for having me on today. Wes, thank you. I'm going to hand over to Wes if he's still with us. I am back. <laughs> thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that session. Justin, Justin, thank you. Thank you, Justin. That was a, pr a pleasure, a privilege, just such a joy and the wealth, you. the wealth of the glory you carry is tangible across cyber. Thank you. It really is, it really is Justin. You are a precious, precious. precious. <laughs> I really felt people were with me. So thank you. You've been a very, very unusual audience today. I really, or community rather, I really felt like the love and I felt like you guys were pulling and I felt like this was a community that's really so open to this. And I know for all of you, you are just going to expand and expand in this. This is you. You are walking in this. I really felt God wanted me to bring this specific message to this community because this is a place of honor and this is a place that's ready, ready for the spirit of wisdom to rest permanently rest on you guys so, so thank you wes so good justin and thank for me you. i think just as a quick takeaway one sentence from me i think this is what you did today justin you placed in front of us a very clear crystal clear mirror and you said look and behold the glory of god wow thank you <laughs> So, Father, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this incredible moment in time that we are connected in you. Thank you for Justin. I pray a huge, warm, gooey, honey blessing of love on that amazing man, this amazing, amazing individual. Thank you for all the IMC family. We mm. bless you all. We love on you all. Thank you for your time. Mm. Pray that your week this week would be a time of deep intimacy in him, mm. in Christ. Mm. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Justin. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. And we will see you next week.